Ladies and gentlemen, good morning everyone. We will now start with the opening of this public session for presenting offers that have to do with the first cycle of production sharing. So we would like to ask you all to silence your cell phones at this time. We will now present the instructions, the safety instructions of this location. Welcome to Windsor Hotels. e em locais de fácil acesso. Em caso de incêndio, não use os elevadores e siga a orientação da nossa brigada. Use as saídas de emergência que estão devidamente sinalizadas, não esquecendo de manter o caminho desobstruído. Lembre-se, a sua segurança sempre deve estar em primeiro lugar. Agradecemos a atenção e desejamos a todos um ótimo evento. At this time, we would like to invite you all to stand and we will now hear the Brazilian national anthem. <música>
we will now watch a video message recorded by the Minister of Minds and Energy, Mr. Adolfo Saxida. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It is with great satisfaction that I am sharing this message due to the first cycle of the open acreage under production sharing regime. This open acreage system has already been consolidated for concession with three cycles conducted and has become more logical and efficient, both for public administration and the market. In this way, the National Council of Energy Policies has now set this open acreage for areas for the exploration of oil and natural gas. And this is independent from the contractual regime. This means more visibility and legal safety for private investments in the oil industry in our country. I would like to remind you all that the results of all eight bidding rounds conducted during the four years of Jair Bolsonaro's government mean investments that are above seven billion reals and the governmental amount that we have also been able to put together is very significant. This is the ninth of the current government and the importance here is not in the signature bonus, but in maintaining this important economic activity, creating jobs and income for all of the Brazilian population. We hope that the policies developed and implemented over the past few years can be maintained so that Brazil can continue being a safe harbor for investments. I wish you all an excellent event good luck and with the grace of God we will move forward. We would now like to call up to the stage the general director of the National Agency of Oil, Gas and Biofuels, Mr. Rodolfo Saboya, who will speak on behalf of the Collegiate Directory of the Agency that is composed by Simone Araújo, Claudio Jorge de Souza, Daniel Maia and Fernando Moura, who are here present. Good morning, everyone. First of all, I would like to thank Minister Saxida for his message and the support during this period in which he has been ahead of the Ministry of Mines and Energy. I would also like to greet the members of our special committee of bidding rounds, the servers of ANP present here, the representatives of the bidding companies and the professionals of the press and everyone who is here in this moment or following us online. Today, ANP is conducting another public session for the bidding of areas for the exploration of natural gas and oil. And this is the first one in the modality of the open acreage under production sharing regime. We have huge volumes of oil under the salt layer that were announced in 2006 and we lived through a boom of commodities. At that time, the energy transition seemed like something more distant and the pre-salt drills revealed many opportunities which motivated changes in the legislation in this sector. 
Over the past 15 years, pre-salt has confirmed its relevance, and today the 130 wells in this environment are now three-fourths of the national production of oil and natural gas, 3.1 billion barrels per day. Only the field of Tupi in the Santos Basin produces 870 thousand barrels of oil per day. These are very impressive numbers under any perspective. Besides this, the discoveries of pre-salt show that they have to do with a world that is now walking towards a sustainable, sustainable energy matrix that wants to reduce the emissions of fossil fuels. On the other hand, today we know that not the whole area of the pre-salt polygon has the same potential. As we advance with explorations, we discover geological risks. And over time, we have adjusted our parameters for bidding and adopted measures to incentivate production, also looking at how to transform these natural resources into riches for the Brazilian society. All of this effort is to increase Brazil's competitivity in the natural gas and oil sector, and we have seen extraordinary results. Over the past 10 years, we have raised more than 140 billion reals in signature bonuses that come from bidding rounds such as this one. For the next five years, we foresee investments in exploration and production of about 500 billion reals, and we foresee that at the end of this period, the country will produce 5 million barrels of oil per day. Of course, we still have many challenges ahead of us. For example, we need to reach a definition on what we intend in regards with exploration on the equatorial margin, which still has great potential that is not well known due to its analogous geological formations that have to do with discoveries in Guyana, Suriname, and the Guinea Gulf. We also need to look at factors such as the recovery factor, which is still low for many standards. We need to look at reducing emissions, the capturing and storing of carbon, and many other factors. Today, we hope to take another important step with this bidding of the 11 blocks located in the pre-salt polygon that are being made available in this first cycle of the production sharing regime. We have nine bidders that are participating, and I believe that we will have a very positive result for the country. That is why I would like to thank you all who have contributed to making this bidding round happen, and I would like to thank the teams of ICMB, IBAMA, MEMA, AGU, TCU, and the ANP itself. Good luck to all of the bidding companies, and thank you, everyone.
Now we have everything ready and we will continue. And now to continue with this public offer, we would like the special members of this committee to present themselves, presided by Mr. Luciano Lobo. Now I will pass the floor to Mr. Luciano Lobo, the president of the Special Bidding Committee. Good morning. Good morning, everyone, representatives of the government, directors of the ANP, and other authorities, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone who is watching us in the live broadcast. We will now start with the first round of the open acreage under production sharing regime promoted by the National Agency of Oil, Natural Gas and Biofuels that now has this special committee for the open acreage under production sharing regime which was nominated by the directors of ANP and the members of this committee are now present on this table as well as the representative here that has been designated to follow the works of this committee and who works with ANP. I, Luciano Lobo, specialist in regulations in ANP, am presiding this committee and will ask its members and the representative here to introduce themselves. I am Isabella Ramos, public prosecutor. I am Clarissa Brandão, professor of the Federal Fluminense University, representative of civil society, Gustavo de Luco. I am a server of ANP and vice president of CEL, Miguel Tupinambá from the State University of Rio, Felicissimo Cardoso Neto, representing ANP. Thank you, representatives. And besides the leading members here, we have two substitute members, Jean Lopes and Leandro Mitro, who are servers of the ANP and who will help us in this bidding round. I would now like to thank not only the members of this committee, but the whole team involved in the preparation of this event, and especially the team that is processing these works and responsible for today's events. The open acreage under production sharing regime considers exploration and production activities of oil and natural gas in blocks located in the pre-salt polygon or areas defined as strategic. In the first cycle, we are offering 11 exploratory blocks in the basins of Campos and Santos corresponding to an area of approximately 19,000 square kilometers. We will now make the most important announcements on the rules established in this tender protocol. We ask you to please pay attention as we will be highlighting the procedures for presenting bidding and the main reasons that may lead to a dequalification. The bidding may be presented by any b qualified bidder that has presented a declaration on these blocks and that is followed by the guarantee that has been approved. The bidder that presents the declaration of these blocks of interest can only present an offer to the block that they have declared of interest. In the case of an offer presented by a consortium, all of the bidders of, these consor of the consortium must have presented a declaration of interest to the relevant block. The envelope of each bid must be sealed with the proper forms and the consortium form, if may be the case. All of the forms must be signed by the qualified representative of the bidder. The envelope must be presented to sell by a qualified or verified representative of this bidder. All of the envelopes that enter 
the bidding area must be presented to sell. The qualified representatives must enter the bidding area with only one bidding envelope for each block and an ID document with photograph. We highlight that the bidders may not take to the bidding area more than one envelope per block to which they will present the bid according to their interest. This bid will be officialized by the system with a printed version. In the case of technical issues, the printed document will be valid. Bidders or consortiums who have the intention to present offers for more than one block need to make sure they have enough guarantees to cover the total of their bids. If the guarantee of this bid is exhausted throughout the event, the other bids that exceed the guarantee of this bidder will be invalidated by the event. This is determined in the bid envelope for each of the blocks that the bidder presents a bid for, be it a chosen bid or not. If this bid has presented a declaration of interest but does not present a valid proposal for the bid that they have declared their interest for, they will be disqualified in this block. Their guarantee balance will be maintained and there is a minimum amount for each block according to the interest presented individually. The presentation of offers will follow the following steps. All of the blocks being offered will be announced at a single moment, in a single time. We will establish a limit deadline for the bidders to go to the bidding area and that will be uh, four minutes long. The processing of the offers and the disclosure of results will be made individually per block according to a sequence defined by the bidding commission. All representatives that go into the bidding area should remain there and wait for the announcement of each block individually so that to present their respective offers for the announced block. The representatives should remain in the bidding area until the end of the public session. Up, up to two registered members uh, will be allowed in the area. In the case one of the representatives needs to leave the bidding area, the other representative should remain in the bidding area and should be custodian of the envelope that should be presented to the commission. The envelopes that are brought into the bidding area will be immediately marked by the organization and will not be able to be substituted. It's prohibited to go out of the bidding area holding envelopes or going back to the area with additional envelopes. During the processing of offers, according to a sequence that was determined by the Commission, each block will be announced and the representatives that are holding the envelope for the announced block at that time should go to the substitute table uh, for, to, for the reading of the cover of the envelope. After the reading of the information of the envelope cover, the representative will be called by the Commission according to the number of the envelope so that it may be deposited in the box. Those who are hold more than one envelope referring to other blocks that are not being processed at that time um, should be careful that they they should make sure that they're depositing the correct envelope in the box. The envelopes that contain the off the offers uh, of the block being processing will be opened will be rem uh, removed from the box and will be opened by members of the commission. The offers will be processed by the processing team. The result of each block will be announced by the commission. After the announcement of, a of the results of a block, the commission will process uh, according to the sequence. In this bidding round, the judging of the offers will be done based on a percentage of oil surplus for the union according to what is shown on screen. The winner will be declared. 
the, the, the bidder who offers the biggest percentage of oil surplus to the union will be the winner of the bidding round. After a manifestation of interest uh, of Petrobras, the, Nash, uh, the CNPE established the participation of the company as operator with a percentage of 30% in the blocks of Agua Maria and Norte de Brava according to the terms of resolution 1 of 2002. Petrobras will be a part of the consortium uh, uh, will be a part of the consortium that presents the uh, offer for these blocks. In case the winning offer is above the minimum established for the tender document Petrobra and Petrobras is not part of the offering consortium the bidding commission will call the representatives that are registered at Petrobras to manifest their decision to compose a consortium with the winning bidders in case Petrobras decides to not be a part of the consortium the commission uh, will announce new percentages of new percentages of participation of the bidders we will now present the sequence for the processing of offers and the disclosure of the results that will be adopted for the blocks being offered. We will start with the Campus Basin that has four blocks and then with the Santos block that has Santos Basin that has another seven blocks as shown on the screen. So I would like to wish good luck to all bidders and an excellent round of bidding for the exploratory blocks of the first block of the open acreage for production sharing. So, uh, continuing with the bidding round, we will now uh, allow the time for opening of the envelopes for the offer. So, we will allow four minutes so that representatives can go to the correct area for the presentation of their proposals. I'd like to highlight once again that the representatives of the bidders can only come into the bidding area holding a single envelope for each block that they will be presenting an offer to according to their declaration of interest. The, the counting of time will be projected on the screen at this moment in time. So the area for uh, showing um, offers is now open. We'd like to request the representatives of company that after they go into the offer area, they should follow the recommendations of Cristiani so that the envelopes can go through a first round of checking, a verification.
would just like to remind you that this is the only time that's possible to make an offer. So the area is opening, and after this, the deadline is finished, then you won't be able to offer any more offers. Okay, time is up. I would like to ask the representatives to wait uh, to be called by the commission. Now we will start the round of processing, checking the offers and checking the results that will happen in the sequence uh, following the sequence of the blocks present, presented on screen previously. If, if a representative is holding more than one envelope uh, for the blocks that are not being currently offered, please be very careful regarding the envelope that will be presented and deposited uh, when they are when the offers are being made. Now we will start the processing of the offers with the Agua Marina block located in the Santos Basin. We would like to ask the representatives of the bidders that who will be presenting an offer for the Agua Marina block to go to the table on the side so that the envelopes can the contents of the envelopes may be read. The representatives with offers for other blocks please uh, should wait uh, to be called. So please, uh, representatives that have an offer for the Agua Marina block should go to the side table.
Good luck to the bidder that presented offers for the Agua Maria block. Please wait to be called by the commission to deposit your envelopes in the box. So for the Aguamarian block, I'd like to ask representative for envelope one of the consortium for, formed by Petrobras and Shell Brazil. Please env uh, deposit your envelope in the ballot box. Now I'd like to ask the representative of envelope 2 of consortium formed by the companies Total Energy, AP, Petronas, and Qatar Energy to deposit your envelope in the ballot box. We will now show a summary of the bidders. For the Aguamarinha block, we received two envelopes according uh, to what is shown on screen. We would like to request the removal of the envelopes for processing and for their reading. So, Cristiani, please remove the envelopes from the ballot box. So the envelope is sealed. The offer is valid. So please, Cristiani, you can now take the second envelope from the ballot box. The envelope is sealed. The offer is valid. We would like like we would now like to announce the result of the Agua Maria block. So for the Agua Maria block, the winning consortium was the consortium formed by companies Total Energy EP, Petronas, and Qatar Energy. So Petrobras exercised its right, its preferential right, to act as an operator 
in the Aguamarina block, the offer of the winning block was superior to minimum percentage of oil surplus determined in the tender notice, and Petrobras is not a part of the offering consortium. Petrobras should now go to a reserved room with a member of a commission, a server of the ANP, to fill, it up, fill in a document uh, sh uh, to signal whether they have an interest of min uh, being a part of the consortium with the, mining, with the winning bidders. Now I'd like to present, we would like a representative of Petrobras to come to the commission desk. The company will have 30 minutes to make its decision. So I'd like to ask the representative whether he has any questions. No questions? Okay, so I'd like to request everybody to remain in their places so as to not uh, cause any obstacles f uh, for the Petrobras member and uh, the, the continuation of this process. I'd like to request that the representative go to the room and I'd like to request that time be uh, counted and displayed on screen. So let's display the time on screen and we'll have 30 minutes starting now. Thank you.
I would now like to ask you all to take your seats so that we can continue since the Petrobras representative has already returned to the bidding room. I would now like to call Petrobras's representative so he can deliver the form of interest to participate in the consortium that has won the bidding round for the Agua Marina block. Petrobras, Petróleo Brasileiro S.A., with a special committee of bidding of the first cycle of open acreage under production sharing regime, has declared that they are interested in participating in the winning consortium. So congratulations to the winning consortium. We will now continue and show the amounts offered here in the screen, the accumulated bonus of 65 million reals with an investment of 108 million reals. Now we will continue to process the bidding for the next block. Now continuing with this bidding round, we will ask the representatives of the bidders who will present offers to the, for the block Norte de Brava from the Campus Basin to please go towards the lateral side table here. And those who have offers or bids for other blocks, please wait until you are called up. Good luck to the bidders who have presented bids. We will now wait for the committee to call you to deposit your slips in the ballot box. Please, for Block Norte de Brava, I will ask the representative of Envelope 1 of the Consortium of the Companies Equinor, Brazil and Petronas to please deposit the envelope in the ballot box. Please, representative of envelope two from the company Petrobras, you may now place your envelope inside the ballot box. We will now exhibit a summary of the bidders for Noche Brava block. We have received two envelopes according to what you can see on the screen here. We will now ask Cristiani to remove the envelopes so they can be read and processed. Cristiani, you may now remove the first envelope from the ballot box.
The envelope is sealed. The offer is valid. Please, Cristiani, you may now remove the second envelope. The envelope is sealed. The offer is valid. We will now show the result for the block of Noche de Brava. The winner is the company Petrobras with a percentage of surplus of 61.71%. Congratulations to the bidder. Petrobras has now used its right of preference to act as the operator and the offer is above the minimum established by this tender of protocol. The, they are the winning bidder so according to the guidelines of this tender protocol it is not necessary for the company to express its interest to be a part of the winning consortium. We are now showing on the screen the summary of this round with the accumulated bonus of 571,135,000 reals with a foreseen investment of 216 million reals. We now continue to process the offer of the next block. The next block for the bidding round is Itain Bezinho and we will now ask the bidders who have envelopes for this block of Itain Bezinho to present your envelopes to the side table of the committee. We are now announcing the presentation of the bidding for the next block. Continuing with this bidding round, we ask the representatives of the bidders who will present bids for the block of Turmalin and the Campus Basin to please go towards the side table to present their envelopes for this block. The other representatives, please be seated and wait to be called up. We inform that we have not received bids for Intaim Bezinho or Turmalina. We are now moving to the next block. We would now ask the representatives of the bidders who have envelopes for the block of Agatha to present their envelopes on the side table so these envelopes can be read. 
for the block of Agatha. We now inform that there are no representatives presenting bids for the block of Agatha, so we will now continue to the next block. We now request the representatives who have bids for the block of Bumerangi to go towards the side table and present their bids for the block of Bumerangi. Good luck to the bidders. We now will wait for the commission so you can deposit your envelopes in the ballot box. Please, for the block Bumerangi, the representative of envelope one from the company BP Energy may now deposit the envelope in the ballot box. We are now exhibiting on the screen the summary of the bidders for the boomerang block. We have received one envelope, as you can see on the screen. Cristiani, you may now remove the envelope so it can be read and processed. Envelope sealed. The offer is valid. We are now announcing the result of the offers of the bidding for the boomerang block. The winner here is BP Energy with a percentage of oil of 5.90%. Congratulations to the winning bidder. We are now presenting the summary of this round with an accumulated bonus of 586 million 984,000 reals with investments of 384 million reals foreseen investments. Now we continue with the offer and bidding for Cruzeiro do Sul. Now the bidders who have envelopes for the block of Cruzeiro do Sul may present their envelopes to the side table of the committee. We inform there were no 
bids for Cruzeiro do Sul, so now we will move to the next block. The representatives of the bidders who will be offering, making offers for the Esmeralda block to go to the side table so that the envelopes can be read. We would like to inform that there were no representatives who presented envelopes for the Esmeralda block in the Santos Basin. So we will now announce the next block. Representatives who have offers for the Jaja block in the Santos Basin, please present your envelopes at the side table of the Commission. We also did not have any offers for the Jaja block. We would like to ask representatives of the bidders who will be making offers for the Sudoeste Sagittario block of the Santos Basin to go to the side table of the Commission so that the envelopes may be read. Good luck to the bidders who made an offer for the Sudoeste Sagittario block. Please wait to be called by the Commission to develop your envelope in the box. For the Sudoeste Sagittario block, I'd like to ask the representative of envelope 1 of the consortium formed by Petrobras and Chao Brasil to develop their envelope in the box. We will, we will now display a summary of the bidders of the Sudoeste Sagittario block. So for this block, we received one envelope as displayed on the screen. Please, Cristiani, remove the envelope so that it can be read and processed. The envelope is sealed. The offer is valid. We would like to announce the result of the offer for the, the Sudoeste Sagittario block of the Santos Basin. The winning consortium is a consortium formed by Petrobras and Shell Brazil with a percentage of oil surplus of 25%. So congratulations to the winning consortium. We will now display a summary of the values being offered as shown on the screen. An accumulated bonus is of 1916 million with an expected investment volume of over 400 million highs. We would like not. We would like to announce offers. Uh, would like to start the their bidding round for the Tupinamba block. So those who have an offer, please present your envelope to the side table of the commission. We would like to inform that there were no offers for the Tupinamba block located in the Santos Basin.
now we display the results of the end of the this winning uh, bidding round. The accumulated bonus of 960 million reais, 252,000 reais, and a forecast investment of 432 million reais. So I would like to wish good luck to the winning bidders in the execution of their contracts and I declare this public session of the presentation of offers for the first cycle of open acreage for production sharing ended. So have a good day.
Director General of ANP, Hodov Saboyov, the Secretary of Oil and Gas at the Ministry of Energy and Mines, Rafael Bastos. So if you have a question, please raise your hand and tell us your name and the media um, agency they are part of because this is being broadcast. Uh, let's just make a quick statement. Okay, so the director would like to highlight the results of this round before we go to a Q&A session. So a very good morning to everyone. Today we had a very good result for Brazil. The four blocks that were awarded in this first cycle of the open acreage for production sharing represented had nine over 1900 million in signing bonuses so that represents 72 percent of the maximum of bonus that could be uh, gotten if all of the areas had been awarded so with that we ensure minimum investments of 1.4 billion reais, which will result in economic activity, the generation of jobs and income for Brazilians. This shows us that the areas with greatest potential were of interest to companies that uh, drill oil and gas. But the best news from today is that we were able to obtain competition for two of these areas, two out of these four areas that are the most relevant, so Agua Marinha and Norte de Brava. In Agua Marinha, the minimum percentage of oil surplus was fixed at 13.4 and so it was larger than uh, that was a bigger than 220 percent increase and in and in Brava the percentage was over 61 percent which represents a premium of almost 171 percent in relation to the minimum of 22.71 percent with that, we ensure more resources to society in the long term by means of a greater collection of revenue over the profit of production of oil as a result of the bidding round. So today's result also reinforces the success of the open acreage model because the Sudoeste, uh, Boomerang, and Sudoeste Sagittario areas had already been offered in the sixth round of production sharing and there were no interested parties. So it, with this new model and with reviewed parameters, all of this will allow us uh, to generate more uh, revenue and more resources for the country. So now I'm available uh, to answer questions and I don't know if the secre if Secretary Rafael would like to add anything. Yeah, I would just like to corroborate your words. Um, this uh, our bidding round was successful, so this model has been showing to be adequate since the areas are available uh, to the companies, and at any moment the companies may uh, uh, may ask A, a and P to uh, hold the bidding round. So we and in this bidding round we had six winning companies, so um, the, these areas are not concentrated in the hands of a single company. And the oil and gas industry continues to be developed in Brazil with this. So these areas will be developing for many years uh, jobs and investments in Brazil. So without a doubt, uh, this, uh, this our, our bidding round was very successful. So we're available to answer any questions. Good morning. I'm Rogério Coutinho from TV Global. Congratulations for this bidding round. I would like to insist on an issue, especially uh, for the population to know, uh, since, you know, uh, the population follows everything that we talk about and the acronyms that we mentioned. So w we want to understand how you believe this bidding round is a success, since out of only, out of 11 out of, out of 11 sectors, only four were awarded. I know that you already made us some exp gave us some explanations and presented us some numbers, but I would like you to be a little bit clearer because out of 11 blocks that were offered, only four were awarded. So why do you consider that a success? And once again, I would like to ask, why do you think there was no interest in the other blocks? And to finalize, how can these acron how can these numbers be translated in terms of benefits for Brazilian society? Thank you for the question for the opportunity to clarify things. So first of all, we need to understand the context in which this bidding round happened, uh, the context of the industry as a whole. We have 
an international scenario which is very challenging. We have an energy uh, transition that's happening, so companies are very selective in terms of their investments. There are countries that are competing for these investments, so that's why we need to keep trying and we need to be more competitive in terms of uh, fighting for these resources. And I would say that this shows that, for example, what we imagined initially in relation to the risk, in terms of you know risk zero for the uh, areas of the pre-salt polygon, I think everybody already knows today that there is a geological risk within the pre-salt polygon as well, unlike what was thought before. As I mentioned in the beginning, people imagine that every area of of the pre-salt layer would be a, would be a success. And today we understand that there is a geological risk risk in that area. So this scenario as a whole always imposes challenges uh, for companies to select how they will invest their money. So companies will obviously be choosing the best opportunities. And we saw large premiums, as I showed to everyone. And so that shows that when an area is interesting and when an area is competitive in relation to other offers that exist, not only in Brazil, but in other countries, because you know that we have neighboring countries that are offering very competitive offers. So we are always in a market that's always fighting for these investments. And so when we get an index, when we reach a number, uh, when a signing bonus, when we actually, I'm sorry, uh, the bonus was a fixed amount. When we get an offer, when a percentage of oil surplus reaches a 72% of the maximum amount that we could reach, then I believe that's a, a good result. Of course, every bidding round is done so that we can achieve a, a, a result of 100%. But as, a, but as you could, could see, we had areas that had been offered in the past with different offers, with different parameters, and they didn't get any, uh, there were no offers made to them. So we reanalyzed these parameters, and today these areas were sold. So every bidding round is a learning opportunity so that we can in the next opportunities, establish more attractive conditions for each one of these fields. That is part of the explanation, which is complex. Of course, the companies need to say why they have decided not to bid, but that is an analysis that we conduct immediately after the bidding round. Thank you for reminding me of this. That's very important because this benefit comes in many ways. This investment means that we are creating jobs, creating a demand for the industry and services and this means we have a whole value chain that comes from this activity that will be implemented be it in the pre-salt area or the choices that these companies make in regards to hiring assets and services and of course the taxes that come from the production of these activities the governmental participation all of this creates a huge amount of perspectives that society as a whole benefits from. So economic growth, economic development, jobs and income for the society. So better quality of life for the society. Yes, I just want to make a comment about the pre-salt areas that are left over. Yes, there are some risks and those that have not been awarded yet, they have a slightly higher risk. So just the fact that we have been able to attend the expectation on these four awarded blocks in this very challenging scenario right now, that is already a great victory for us. And just about the collection that we expect with the four contracts, the expectations that we have 
we hope to collect 50 billion adding everything the signed bonuses the surplus of oil oil for the union royalties all of the taxes everything that is our expectation according to our projections so this is a very significant result that we hope to obtain with the contract so this signed bonus then comes first and we of course have jobs and other long-term benefits Mata Nogueira from Reuters agency hello so the result of this bidding round has three areas with operations of Petrobras in a scenario in which the government has been seeking out a diversification in the operators in the pre-salt area could you comment on this and also this result of four blocks you're saying it's interesting but the government still wants to negotiate pre-salt areas so what are you thinking in terms of improvements in order to attract more operators and more companies for these leftover areas and I have a doubt here about a number yeah I'd like you to speak about the percentage reached is that 52 percent of this intended signed bonus yes if all of them were sold that's the maximum can you speak to us about the nominal number here uh, let me take a look here 1.28 billion I think yes 1.28 billion if all of them were awarded and the awarded bonus was of 916 million so going back to your question first of all yes Petrobras was in fact very involved here but we had five other international companies participating so that already shows a diversity of players that are participating in this exploration with Petrobras we are always seeking out this diversification with more companies and if we have more companies we think this is more positive for Brazil in a general way because of the objective that we have of obtaining a more plural market so I don't see any issues here as I said what we want for the future is um, to work with these areas and additional areas that may become possibilities and also to reanalyze these areas to look at their parameters for the bidding rounds and to readequate that them according to the m moment of the market and maybe conduct a bidding round in a more receptive moment for the market yes I'd just like to make another comment please I'd like to ask if you believe that at this time in the government transition if this maybe could have affected the bidding round because we are having different reforms that are happening in the legislation and this can cause some kind of apprehension in the market did this affect the result well that's hard to say I think probably the companies could express this more clearly if this had an impact or not I think the government transition is normal it's just a fact of life but I think maybe this is a question for the companies themselves would you like to say something else here hello good morning I'm Giuliani Souza from Climatio TV and I also am a part of the international organization at IATA so today participating in this bidding round of these blocks the blocks that did not receive any bids of them so six did not receive bids so all of these blocks the International Institute Arayara has started with legal action against them do you think that the lack of interest of the companies have to do with these legal initiatives and also Brazil in this scenario of climate change that we are speaking about the climate emergency why is Brazil still insisting on going against this current because we already have huge potential for investment in renewable energy and when you spoke about investments and development for the population and creating jobs I wanted to understand how the local populations that live close to these areas how will they be receiving these investments I'd like to understand this what, sorry what is your name Giuliani Giuliani Souza Giuliani thank you for your question okay there are many layers to your question I'm going to try and remember all of them first of all 
if these legal sanctions started by Arayada have impacted the companies. I think in this case, once again, only the companies can state if this is the case or, or not. I really cannot speak to this, but ANP does not have any kind of evaluation on this. No, we do not. Okay, your second question, could you repeat it for me? It's about the climate emergency. Yes, great, excellent. I agree with you, absolutely, Juliana. There is a climate emergency, and, uh, you know, I have children, I have grandchildren, as many of you here, and I hope that they will live in a world similar to the one we live in today. So it's very important for us to migrate to renewable energy sources that protect the planet because we are now seeing that climate change can become much more dramatic climate phenomena. Despite all of this, the world needs to transition from energy sources that are polluting and we need to transition to renewable energies, and this is happening. I have no doubts about this, but this can only happen when we have renewables that are available in the necessary amount to replace around the world the amount of energy that is generated by these polluting sources. So we can't simply suppress the production of fossil fuels because if we do that we will not have energy transition. We will have we will deal with poverty and poor people will be the first victims due to a lack of energy sources because energy will become more expensive. Of course, I agree with you that we need to migrate to a world of renewable energies, but this needs to be done in a rational energy, otherwise we will deal with energy poverty and not energy transition. And what we have seen more recently that comes from the situation of the conflict in Eastern Europe this conflict has called our attention in a very assertive manner in everyone's lives, especially in European countries, that energy security is as important as the transition. The transition cannot happen without the energy. Okay, so we can't wait. And really, we need this replacement to happen in a safe manner. Today, we still need the production of energy through fossil fuels. So first, we need to reduce the demand we have for fossil fuels because there will be an offer of renewables that can replace this and at a price that allows for the transition to happen. Yes, I just want to make another comment on this. On behalf of the Ministry of Mines and Energy, we have policies developed that are very well developed for renewables. And this year, we have broken records for solar power, wind power. Brazil is a global leader in biofuels. We have 27% of ethanol in our gasoline, 10% of biodiesel and diesel. So this is in a country as big as Brazil. That really doesn't exist anywhere in the world. So in 20 years, you know, the world is expecting to have 7% of biodiesel and diesel. And today we already have these numbers. And this is the expectation for the global average in 20 years. We already have this today here. But as has been commented, fossil fuels are still a need. We cannot escape from this. And... Uh, if we did this, we would be placing society under an energy risk. And today we are already leaders in terms of renewable energies. Yes, very well remembered. Our energy matrix is almost 50% renewable. So no country the size of ours is even close to that. Now about the local populations that live around these areas they are usually impacted due to oil spills and other problems environmental impacts and so this affects their income and the activities they need to create their income so what kinds of investments actually reach the local populations well so all of these investments when you authorize exploration of course there is environmental licensing 
and many other aspects that have to do with the construction of this project. So in this environmental licensing, this social impact of the activity is considered in the discussion and this has to do with compensations, the mitigation of impacts, and including social activities for the populations that are impacted by the activities of exploration. That is part of the package analyzed by another sector of the process, not ANP. So there is an interest in the affected populations and this has to do with the environmental licensing of these activities. So I think it's absolutely legitimate that these interests be considered and included in the demands that a project must present to be approved. And I think that in this way, the communities, and many times we observe this, especially in the exploration of onshore oil that happens in poorer regions of Brazil, the effects of the exploratory activities on the communities because they activate the local economy, creating jobs, collection of taxes, and many of these communities depend on these activities that are developed there locally. Is there another part? No? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Juliana. Good morning, everyone. Mariana Duran from Bloomberg Agency. I would like you to please uh, help me understand a little bit about how these conversations are happening in the government transition. What is the perspective that you have on the continuity of the bidding rounds in the next government? If this kind of conversation has already happened, I know some meetings ha have already happened, so could you tell me a little bit more about this? Well, yes, the ANP has already gone together with the transition team. And we spoke about the subjects that are currently ongoing in the agency, uh, the regulatory agenda or schedule that is currently ongoing as well. This has been informed to the transition team. And we have spoken about internal administrative subjects. That has basically been it. And we will wait to see what happens in terms of future guidelines that may be communicated by the National Council on Energy Policies. That is all I have to say right now. Yeah, I don't have anything to add. This was not a topic that was talked about specifically uh, with the transition team. Uh, but my opinion is that I don't think we should have an interruption of these bids because this model, uh, I think it crosses uh, through governments. It's a well consoli consolidated program. It's accepted by the industry in Brazil is a model, of, a reference for the rest of the world in terms of, you know, bidding rounds. A lot of countries come to Brazil to understand how we do this. So I don't think there's a reason to have some kind of interruption uh, in these bidding rounds. But again, this wasn't talked about with the transition team. Hi, good morning. My name is Priscilla. I'm from Bunge News FM. I'm from Bunge News FM. And I'd like to ask two questions. I'd like to ask, first of all, about the trans the transition government. The, the, the government that's going to be taking place has already talked about this investment. So how will the National Petroleum Agency act? How is everything going to be? And I would like to know what your expectation is in relation to oil uh, next year, because this year we saw some peaks, uh, some rises uh, in the price, especially because of the conflict between Russia and Ukraine. So what are your expectations in relation to the price of oil the next year? Okay, so in relation to your first question, basically, in terms of a possible new approach in relation to uh, Petrobras, basically, the, our agency waits for the decisions that are made by the CNPE. A, a regulatory agency such as NP merely helps and brings data to these kinds of discussions. ANP is a rich, uh, uh, a rich source of information, statistical information, and so basically that's what we do. We we, we just receive the the recommendations for from CNP. So what was your second question? 
oh, expect, the expectations in relation to the price of oil. Yeah, that's the $1 million question. We know that the price of oil is one of those variables that's, uh, that's, that's made to demoralize any kind of forecasts. We had that war in Eastern Europe, and the expectation was that uh, there would be a, a, a surge in the price of derivatives and, and oil because of because of the sanctions on Russian products. But what we actually saw was that Europe, for this winter is, uh, sp more specifically, they responded very rapidly in terms of um, their, their, the amount of gas that they were able to accumulate. And the winter also arrived late in Europe, so that helped. So the consumption of those gas reserves uh, uh, were less than what was expected. So they were already starting to store natural gas in ships uh, outside of ports uh, so that they could unload that material in case there was an increased demand. So they were ready for an increased demand for the winter. And you know, there's there's a winter every year and we know and, and there will be a winter next year. And, but, and so, I, you know, I don't want to make any forecasts about the price of oil because I'm afraid that I'll get things wrong. It's really difficult to do this analysis, so I want to avoid making any kind of forecasts. Okay, so thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for your questions.